Hey, welcome back to Dawn Chorus Writes, Meeting Under the Stars, a miraculous fan fiction. Chapter 5. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe for the next chapter coming up, and comment down below. Enjoy! Meeting Under the Stars Chapter 5 Chat Noir's POV Chat paced along the rooftop of Notre, Notre Dame, watching Marinette's bedroom. He was torn. Does he visit his princess, curl up in her arms, grateful he could do so, blocking out the horror he had witnessed hours earlier? Or go in there and vent his anger? It wasn't Lady's Book's fault at what happened to her, and yet the feeling of rage and frustration coursed through him. Why couldn't he just land in her room, tell her he knows she is Ladybug, and try to form a plan on how they were going to stop some bear? Before he knew what he was doing, Shat was vaulting across the river Seine and landed onto Marinette's balcony. He hesitated for a moment whether he should enter, or if this was a dangerous game he was playing, allowing his heart to make its choices. If he needed any more signs that he had the look of a black cat, the heavens opened and cold October rain poured down. Maybe it was someone from above telling him this was a bad idea. He glanced through the window and saw Marinette bent over a desk sketching out designs. Then the image of her bloody body lying in his arms, not responding to his touch, replayed in a loop inside his mind. How close they had come to not succeeding. How close he had gotten to losing the love of his life. Normally, he would simply enter her room, talk or not talk, but knowing she was there made all the difference. He noticed the usual plate of pastries waiting for him, but his nauseous stomach didn't like that idea. Every part of him wanted to reach out and touch her, make sure that she was real, that the image he saw now wasn't some sort of trick. His hand hovered above the handle. No, this wasn't right. Using her for comfort, being selfish when he should tell her the truth, he clenched his fist and turned his back. He was about to leap away when... Kitty? Ugh! It's pouring down! What are you doing? Come inside! No. No. I think, it, I think it's best if I don't tonight. Kitty! Please! He heard her moan as the window opened further. Princess, get back inside! He turned round and faced her. No, not without you. She folded her arms, giving him the determined ladybug stare. In a matter of minutes, her clothes were soaked through. The chunky knitted jumper hung off her shoulders as her skinny jeans clung to her legs as a second skin. Princess, I have a magical suit when you do not. If you stay out here in this, you'll get ill. Then come inside. She tried grabbing at his hand, but he pulled it away. Kitty! What's wrong? Shat didn't reply. Then answer this. Why come here if you weren't planning to come in? I... I needed to see if you... He stopped himself from finishing the sentence and giving away the secret. Here I am. She took a step closer to him, holding her hand out as if she was approaching a scared animal, not wanting it to dart away. Princess, go inside, please. No. She stood in front of him, her eyes wide with concern. She reached her hand out to his cheek, cupping it gently. Not until you come in with me and dry off. Or tell me what is wrong here and now. He peeled back a piece of her hair that was glued to her face 
the rain forcing her hair out of the messy burn and hung over her shoulders. His stature meant he had to lean over her, gazing into her eyes that held the answer to his heart. I nearly lost Ladybug today. I nearly lost. But you didn't, did you? She's fine? I, I don't know what I would do if anything would happen. Why were words so hard to say? Maybe this was the moment he'd been looking for. Because you still love Ladybug. Her face moved closer to his as she arched up on her bare feet. Yes. No, it's... His voice veered off as he struggled to find the words. There was a flash of hurt and then confusion washed across her face. Before he knew what he was doing, Shat leant in. Her lips felt cold at first and then as if the kiss had woken her from a magical slumber, they came to life, warm and soft. Wrapping his arms around her, he pulled her tighter towards him. The moment he had waited for for years, dreamt of, was finally coming true. Then, in a moment of clarity of what it would mean, what it would change, Shat paused. He caught a glimpse of Marinette's expression, one of surprise, and then, love. She wrapped her arms around his neck and returned the kiss. After a while, they pulled apart, but still in each other's arms. Come inside, she whispered. His hands moved from her hair and neck, sliding down her arms to her hands. He gave her a single nod and allowed her to guide him. Once they were on the bottom level of her room, he noticed a shiver for the first time and a wave of guilt washed over him, forcing her to stand in the freezing rain. You need to change before you get ill, he said softly. Don't go anywhere. Promise me. She let go of his hand and moved over to a tall standing cupboard and pulled out three towels. She threw one to Shat, holding back two for herself. I'll only be a minute. He smiled, seeing the blush in her cheeks as she made her way to the bathroom. He waited for the door to click shut before throwing the towel over his head and taking a deep breath as he rubbed it over his hair. Okay, breathe. You kissed Marinette. Ladybug. She kissed you back. Does that mean? Oh, what does that mean? He moaned. Great. The plan for her to fall in love with Adrian has just come apart and the only relationship that could have a future unless he revealed his identity. But no, he had to kiss her as Shat. But she kissed him back. Does that mean she has feelings for Shat and not Adrian? Oh, why did he have to make it so much more complicated? And yet, the way she had looked at him and reached out to him, how could he not have acted? Are you alright? She said with a slight giggle to her voice. Shat pulled the towel off his head, revealing fluffy blonde hair against flushed cheeks. Yep. Fine. You? Why did he feel an awkward teenager all over again? Better now. She continued to rub one of the smaller towels through her hair at an angle. The low light glowed across her stunning features. She was changed into a simple pink t-shirt and pink PJ bottoms. I was... I was thinking about making a hot chocolate, if you fancy one. Sounds great. Let me help you. He rose to his feet as she walked towards him, her bluebell eyes holding his in a way that melted his heart. He wanted just to pull her in in his embrace and kiss her again. 
No, no, take it so. Marinette smiled and held out her hand for the towel. Great! She dropped them into the basket before opening the hatch door to the living quarters below. There was a lamp on in the corner, creating shadows around the room as the figures moved around the space. She grabbed a saucepan from the bottom cupboard and without thinking, shat open the fridge and passed out the milk bottle. Thank you. It's as if you knew where that was. Princess, it's not as if this is the first time we have made hot chocolate together. That's true. But it has been a while though. She began humming to herself as she focused on the measuring out the rich cocoa powder in the saucepan. So, I was thinking, we can watch a film with the hot chocolates? Or we could talk. She glanced back towards Shat, who was leaning against the table, grinning at her. Even in the low light, he could tell that she had turned a beetroot red. He was amazed at her. She had battled the same fight as him, and yet she was the one caring for him. No. Tomorrow, they could talk. Tonight, he wanted to stay in the moment of this bliss as long as he could. I think a film would be perfect idea. Anyone that featured a handsome chat in it is fine with me. He edged closer and gave her a playful grin. There is only one handsome chat, she said with a flirty tone, and it was his turn to become a shade of deep crimson. They curled up on the bed after two empty cups of hot chocolate and pastries fewer. He held Marinette in his arms. He watched as the overtypical male lead confessed his love to the girl he loved and felt his own becoming sleepy in his arms. If only confessing your feelings was that simple. Princess. She let out a little mumble. I love you. Thank you for listening to chapter five of Meeting Under the Stars. Make sure you smash that like button. Comment down below because I love to hear from you and it really does help with the channel. And subscribe so you do not miss out on chapter six. You want to know what happened next. Okay, thanks. Bye.